Hello and welcome to this session in which we will solve this CPA exam simulation that deals with debt investments. In this simulation, we have a portfolio of debt investments for Adam Company. And under debt investments, we could have three categories, held to maturities bonds, trading securities bonds, and available for sale bonds. We have three categories. We are giving the fair value of year X1, the fair value of year X2, amortized cost for X1 and amortized cost for X2. For this simulation, I can ask you 10 to different 15 multiple choice questions easily. Or I can give you a simulation and ask you to answer a few questions about the data giving. In this, in this simulation, that's what I will do. I'm going to make it a simulation and I'm going to ask you three specific questions. And those are, what balance sheet amount would Adam report for the total investments for the bonds for year X1, what would the balance sheet and Adam's accumulated other comprehensive income would be in year X2? And I'm going to ask you the third question, what total unrealized holding gain would Adam report in X2 income statement? Notice those questions are considered basically a simulations. For example, on the simulation, I would ask you to input the number, the answer and a box. Also, I can ask you the same questions and give you four multiple choice. Simply put, any simulation can be turned into a multiple choice or a multiple choice can be turned into a simulation. What should you do now? See if you can answer those three questions before I go ahead and start solving this simulation. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Let's go ahead and start to answer the first question. What balance sheet amount would Adam report for its investment in 20X and at the end of the 20X1, which is December 31st, 20X1? So what we need, what do we need to know here? We need to know what is the how are the investments reported on the balance sheet? Well, we have three categories of investments. Again, held to maturities, trading, and available for sale. What do we need to know about those three? Well, we need to know that for available for sale and for trading securities, we need to report the securities at fair market value. Now we have to be very careful. We're looking at X1. So the fair value of X1 is those figures, bond one, bond two, bond three, and available for sale bond. We report them at fair value. How about health to maturities? For health to maturities, we report the value at amortized cost. So simply put, we don't use fair value for the health to maturities. We report them at amortized cost and specifically year one or X1 amortized cost. What does that mean? It means what's reported on the balance sheet is the fair value of trading securities and fair value of available for sale plus the amortized cost of health to maturities. All in all, if we add up these figures, 62,000 plus 64 plus 61 plus 160 plus 386, the investment as of December 31st, our investment account should show 733,000, assuming my math is right, as of 1231 year X1. So you have to be very careful what common, what common mistakes a, a student can make. Well, rather than X1, you will do for X2, which is incorrect. They're asking for X1. That's the first common mistake. Rather than, for example, rather than using the fair value for the trading, some students might use the cost or they might use the fair value for health to maturities. So you have to be careful that, that health to maturities are reported at amortized cost, trading securities and available for sale are reported at fair value. So let's answer the second question. What would be in the balance of Adam's accumulated other comprehensive income with respect to these investments as of X2 balance sheet date? So we're looking at A, OCI, accumulated other comprehensive income. Which account or which securities affect AOCI with health to maturities? And the answer is no. Health to maturities are reported at amortized cost 
Therefore, they don't affect AOCI, other comprehensive income or comprehensive income. How about trading securities? Trading securities are reported at fair value, but fair value is the corresponding account is an income statement. So we adjust the income statement. Therefore, they don't affect comprehensive income or other comprehensive income. How about available for sale? And the answer is yes. Available for sale securities are reported at fair value, but the fair value go to comprehensive income, goes to the balance sheet. The adjustment is through the balance sheet and from the balance sheet, it end up in comprehensive income. So we have one bond and with the amortized cost of 15, 158 the, the prior year, and now the value of that security is 172,500. How much we should have? Well, if you really think about it, the accumulated adjustment so the adjustment that we need to prepare from year X1 to year X2 is how much? Well, if we look at the difference in value, we went we went from 158 to 172,500. We notice that there's an increase in value, an increase in value of 14,500. Well, what entry do we make? Well, the entry that we make, the cumulative entry is we have to make a fair value adjustment. So we're going to have an account called fair value. And in that account, we should have 14,500 debit. And the fair value for the fair value, the corresponding credit is an account called unrealized gain, unrealized gain. And specifically, it's an equity account. It's an unrealized gain or loss, but it's unrealized gain. So if the fair value is 14,500, Okay, if the fair value should be that much, but how we came up with that fair value, um, you know, in other words, the fair value should be that much, but you have to understand between year one and year two, you know, th th that's the total. Okay, so the unrealized gain should be in total also 14,500. So what happened to the unrealized gain equity? This account here is closed to two accumulated other comprehensive income. Therefore, the balance in accumulated other comprehensive income would be 14,500, 14,500. Now to get there, we might have to make two adjustments, which is we're not going to discuss this because again, we can ask so many questions about this entry. Okay. For example, I could have asked you, what is AOCI for year one? AOCI for year one was only 2000. So the adjustment was 2000. So the adjustment between year one and year two is 12,500 plus the previous 2000 will give us 14,500. So you have to understand the adjustment for year two would have been 12,500, but that's not what we are asking. We are being asked, what's the balance? What's the balance means the ending figure. The ending figure is 14,500. Let's take a look at the third question. What total unrealized holding gain would Adam report in X2 income statement relative to its investment in bonds? Now they're asking us what should we report in income from these investments? Well, let's start from the beginning. Health to maturities. Well, those are reported at amortized cost and none of it goes on the income statement. Fair value securities. Well, fair value secu trading securities. Trading securities are reported at fair value and fair value goes to the income statement. Yes, I would have to say that fair value, because it goes, the change goes through the income statement, it, had, it has to be reported on the income statement. What about, what about available for sale? I just told you it's fair value goes to comprehensive income, which is a balance sheet, which is we don't have to worry about this. Oh, what does that mean? It means all in all, all that we have to do is figure out how much was how much was the trading securities effect on the income statement. Well, for year X2, we have to look at our fair value in X1, compare the fair value of X1 to the fair value of X2. That's the increase, and that increase will or decrease will goes onto the income statement. Well, let's see. For the first security, it went up by twelve thousand. The first bond. The second security, if we look at sixty-four versus ninety-five, it went up by. 31,000, okay, 31,000. And the third security, it went up by 4,500. Let's add them up. And when we add up all the change for bond one, bond two, and bond three, we notice that 47,500 will have to be adjusted to the income statement, thus reporting this change on the income statement. So what did you have to know here? We had to know that we have three types of securities, health to maturities, trading securities available for sale. One, two, we have to know 
Where do we report the changes in the value of these securities? Held to maturities, we don't report it anywhere. It's reported at amortized cost, whatever it's year one or year two, we don't report it at fair value. Trading securities are reported at fair value, but that change in fair value goes to the income statement. Available for sale, they are also reported at fair value, but they go to comprehensive income, first to unrealized gain, then to comprehensive income, which is a balance sheet account. Now, also what we did not cover is the journal entries that lead to the 14,500, the change from year to year. Again, I don't want to confuse you more than, than, I'm, than I should in the simulation, but the point is you need to know how to compute those adjusting entries, and this is what Farhat Lectures will do, will do for you. That's why, that's why we need to know what you need to do, not know, what you need to do is go and work MCQs, look at additional simulations, exercises on farhatlectures.com, including true-false that's going to help you understand this concept. Once again, invest in yourself, whether you are a CPA exam candidate or an accounting student. Good luck and stay safe.